Hey church family, uh, just wanted to make an announcement before we get started. Um, just a reminder, this is actually probably going to be our last recording. Uh, we are going to um, begin the process of restarting, reopening, regathering beginning June 7th. So it would be not this Sunday, but next Sunday. We are going to be gathering outdoors in the parking lot. Uh, we have a large capacity for out there so we can observe the 25% capacity and still all be together for one service. Um, be checking your emails. If you're not getting the emails, please send uh, an email to hello at centercitychurch.org so we can make sure you're getting email updates. Um, we're going to be sending out some emails regarding the time of the service, um, some of the, the practices that we're going to be implementing in order to help protect and, and keep people safe as they're coming in. Um, and as always, if, if you're not comfortable or you're in a, if you have high risk for, if, if you got this, it would not be good, then, um, you know, please feel free to stay home. And we're going to try to continue some of the at-home supplements for service, uh, record the message, uh, post study questions, th things like that, so that you're still able to participate in other ways. So all that to say, be checking your emails so that you can get those updates as they come out and we're going to look forward to being together on June 7th. Um, we are going to do a prayer meeting on Wednesday night. Uh, before that, June 3rd, 7 p.m. We're not going to do a potluck, but we will gather together for a time of prayer in preparation for reopening. Um, we're not going to commit to doing that every week up to this point, but we are going to do it just this once before we reopen on June 7th. So if you're interested on Wednesday night, June 3rd, We'll come together from 7 to 8 and do a prayer meeting to, to pray for the reopening. All right, let's uh, jump into our passage for this morning. That's going to be 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, beginning in verse 1. So if you have your Bibles, follow along with me. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying there is peace and security, then Sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. So then let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. Those who get drunk, are drunk at night, but since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up one another, just as you are doing. Our passage this morning uh, hits at another fascination that we have as humans. Last week we looked at um, just kind of the fascination of what happens after death, and Paul speaks into that, into the culture of the Thessalonians. Well, there is another fascination that we have. Uh, it is a fascination about the, the end of the world. How, when is the Lord going to return? How is the world going to end? Uh, and I think it's a fascination that is something that we are interested in, whether we are religious or irreligious. Right? I grew up in a religious culture that we had cloth charts all over our wall. We took the book of Revelation and we mapped it out and charted it out. And we tried to know when the Lord was going to return. But I also think there is a fascination if you're not religious, right? Uh, think about the way global warming plays into this and how we'll, we'll look at things like global warming and how it's going to uh, impact the climate and how long it's sustainable. Or, or we have movies in our culture about these uh, cataclysmic events that are going to end the world. And, and I think this touches on a very uh, human concern and fascination that crosses, a, uh, that, that crosses religious uh, back, uh, backgrounds or divides. And Paul's going to speak into it, right? It's certainly a fascination that the Thessalonians have because he writes and says, now concerning the times and the seasons, you don't have any need for me to write to you about this. 
right? Paul has already written, he's already talked to them about this, he's instructed them on this, but they are still curious. And I think they're specifically curious about the time of when the Lord is going to return. Right? There's a lot in the Old Testament about what's called here the day of the Lord. It was a day of, of coming judgment on those who didn't believe. Uh, a day where, where those who are, are followers of God would be vindicated by the Lord. Uh, it's a day where they were longing for it. it it's, a, it's something that Jesus spoke about in what we call the Olivet Discourse. Uh, wanting to know the times and the seasons of the Lord's return. I would even say, church family, that um, there has been probably a growing interest in the midst of the pandemic of wanting to know, are these signs that the Lord is returning, right? We, we, we know Jesus is teaching that there's going to be wars and rumors of wars and there's going to be um, sickness and diseases. And, and we know some of those things are going to happen. And, and it's natural when we go into a pandemic to think, is this part of it? Is this, is this leading the way for the Lord's return? And I think Paul has some very clear instruction for us, even today, when we want to know the answers to those questions. And this, he's going to tell us two things about the return of the Lord or the day of the Lord. The first is that its coming is going to be unexpected. Right? The day of the Lord, it's going to be unexpected. Notice what he says here. While people are saying, or I'm sorry, let's get back to verse 2. The day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. This is a very common uh, image for the day of the Lord or the coming of the Lord. It's like a thief in the night. The thing about thieves is they don't typically announce when they're going to come. If they told you when they were going to come, they would never be able to break in because you would always be ready. They don't announce it. They don't tell you. They just come in the middle of the night when you least expect it. It's unexpected, right? It's sudden. It's why you go in and you, you see your, your door is open or cracked and it, it, it alarms you because you weren't expecting it. Caught you off guard or you see a window that's broken or someone's got in or, or, or you see a, a window on your vehicle that's been broken in and, and you know someone has broken in. It, it alarms you because... You didn't expect it. If you had expected it, you would have prepared for it. Um, it, it, It's also one of those images that is helpful because we are readily thinking about it, right? Just think about how much you, you do in preparation to guard against a thief breaking in, right? I go through the same routine every night to make sure the doors are locked to make sure all the doors are closed. I check to make sure our cars are locked. I check all those things, usually two or three times, because if something breaks up my routine, I can't remember which ones I checked, and I gotta go through all of it again, right? It's kind of ingrained in my mind, and that's, that's like the day of the Lord, right? It's something where we're, we think regularly about how things are gonna end. We think about when the Lord is going to return, and Jesus says, it's not for you to try to know the time or the day that he's going to return because it's going to be unexpected, right? I'm not going to tell you when he's coming. Even Jesus himself said, I don't know when I'm going to return, right? That's something the Father knows. And so uh, he's just not for you to know either. So when we go through a pandemic like this or, or there's wars and rumors of wars, um, we should be alert and we should be on guard, but it's not necessarily mean that the world is about to end. It, Paul gives another illustration here that helps us understand it. Not only is the day of the Lord going to be unexpected, it's also going to be inescapable. He says in verse 3, it's when people say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman. Right? It's the moment where where we sit back and we we put our feet up and we think, oh, you know what? We're, We're safe. You know what? We're, we're protected as we need to be. Nothing could ever happen to us. Right? And once it starts, it's not going to stop. He uses the analogy of a woman going into labor. Right? There, there are some uh, medicines that can help slow down labor or maybe delay labor. But, but once a woman is in labor, there is no stopping it. Right? That baby is coming one way or the other. You, you can't escape it. Right? You, there, there's no going back in, in that decision once, once labor is happening. 
And Paul says that's what the day of the Lord's going to be like. Right? It's, it's going to begin and there's going to be no escape from it. The question is then, are you ready for it to come? Right? It's a question I want you to just take a moment to ask. Are you ready for the coming of the day of the Lord? Because once it comes, there's no escape. So two images that help us understand the day of the Lord, right? The first is the thief in the night, helps us understand that the day of the Lord is, is going to be unexpected. But the image of a woman going into labor is that the day of the Lord is going to be inescapable. But not only are there two images that help us understand the day of the Lord, there are also two sets of commands that teach us how we live in light of the coming day of the Lord. Paul goes on in um, verse 4, You are not in darkness, brothers, for, the, for that day to surprise you like a thief. Right? So he's saying, if you're a Christian, you should not be surprised by that day. For you are children of the light, children of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. So let us not sleep as others do, but let us be awake and be sober. Here's the two commands, to be awake and to be sober. Right? It's the first set of commands to be awake and to be sober. Now, Paul does something a, a little bit unique here, and he's really talking about two different domains to which you belong. Right? You, you either belong to one or the other. You're either a, a son or child of the light and the day, or you're a son or child, a daughter of the night and the darkness. Right? It's not both. Right? So he's not saying here that sleep is a bad thing. What he's talking about are, are events that typically happen in different domains, right? And, and during the daytime, right, we are awake and we are sober. The daytime is, is a time of work. It's a time of alertness. It's a time of, of being awake. Now, I know some of you might have unique schedules and you might work at night and you're awake at night and you sleep during the day. Paul's not, Paul's not trying to speak into that. He's not trying to say there's anything wrong with that. He's talking about as a Christian, you are called to live in the domain of the daytime, to live in the domain of light, which is marked and characterized by being awake and being sober. In contrast, there are those who live in darkness, those who live in the night, which the events of the nighttime are marked by sleep and drunkenness. Right? By sleep and drunkenness. So you, you, you live in one or two domains in terms of the coming day of the Lord. And as a Christian, Paul says, you should not be surprised. Thieves don't come during the day. Right? They typically come at night. You're alert, you're awake, and that should be what the day of the Lord is like for you as a Christian. That you should be alert, you should be awake, you should be ready for it. Paul's not saying you should forego all sleep so that you can be ready for the coming day of the Lord. But he's saying you should live as a child of the daytime, alert, watchful, sober, knowing what's going on, being aware, ready for the coming day of the Lord. But there is the other alternative. Those who live in darkness, those who live in the night, those who belong to the domain of darkness and nighttime, they're going to be surprised and it's going to be inescapable. Paul gives us the analogy then of how or the, the, the way that we remain sober and alert. Notice what he says in verse 8. Since we belong to the day, let us be sober. And this is how we do it. Having put on the breastplate of faith and love for a helmet, the hope of salvation. This is how we stay alert and we stay awake. And, and it's, it's the image of a, of a warrior, of a of a soldier, right, who's putting on his armor, who's ready for battle, right, that, that a soldier that is surprised doesn't have time to put on their armor, doesn't have time to get ready for battle, but the alert soldier is, is dressed and prepared. Now, this imagery should sound familiar to you. It, it's, it's more fully developed in Ephesians chapter 6. Paul goes through and uses the analogy of all sorts of different things, the breastplate, the shoes, 
uh, the helmet, the sword, and we get this full image of the, the, the soldier. Um, but honestly, I didn't even realize there was another place in Scripture until this week, and I was going through here, where we get the armor of God explained. And it's explained a little bit differently, because it's not the breastplate of righteousness. Uh, it's called the breastplate of faith and love. It's the helmet the hope of salvation, right? We again get that triad of faith, love, and hope. These are the elements that help us remain sober and alert for the coming day of the Lord. We remain steadfast in our hope that, that we remain faithful to the Lord, that we are uh, continuing to love one another as he has unfolded for us in this passage, that these elements of community and of endurance and of faithfulness, they are what mark a soldier who is alert and awake and ready for the coming day. I would, I would ask you, Christian, are you alert? Are you ready for the coming day of the Lord? Right? Like where, where, when you think about this, what does the breastplate of faith and love look like? Are you, are you prepared? Are you, are you armored and ready for battle? Right? Do you have your, salv- your helmet, the hope of salvation? Are you, do you have it f- uh, secured to your head? Are you ready for battle? Right? That the salvation that we have through Christ and sinking and, and into it and, and guarding our lives with it is what is keeping us sober and vigilant for that day. He gives us a beautiful reminder of what is that hope of salvation. It's that, Christian, that day for you is not a day of the wrath of God coming for you. right, Christian, God has not destined you for wrath is what he says here. Right? So you don't have to run in fear of this day. You don't have to hide from this day. You don't have to fret this coming day of the Lord. Right? But it is for you a day of salvation. Right? A day that when the Lord comes, it is going to be the day where you obtain the salvation that Jesus has won on your behalf. Right? The one who died for you so that you might live with him, as he says in verse 10, comes and completes and fulfills your salvation in him. But if you are not a part of the domain of light, the other part of this is is the reality for you. That this coming day of the Lord is a day that you should fear. It is a day that you should fret and worry about. Because it is a day of the coming wrath of God against you. Those who are not found in Christ, those who are not protected by Christ, those who are not secure in the righteousness of Christ for their salvation. The coming day of the Lord will be a day of God's wrath coming on them. And I would just urge you as you watch this video, if you live in the domain of darkness, if you're not ready for this coming day of the Lord, just go ahead and stop watching this video. Get on your knees and call out to the Lord. Surrender your life to Him. Commit your life to Him. Put your faith in Him. Repent and turn from your sin and profess faith in Jesus Christ for your salvation. He has died for you so that you might live with Him. And so you can be alert and you can watch for this day with with wonderful expectation because it's not a day for you to fear but it is a day for you to long for its coming, a day that you want to be as alert and ready as possible because it is a day of salvation. There is another set of commands in this passage, and it comes right at the end, uh, kind of like our passage last week. Verse 11 says, Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. Notice the, the, the set of commands that are coming together again as a pair to encourage one another. Last week we looked at this word and it's the word of coming to the aid or coming to the side of another. right? It, it's not coming over someone and, and stomping them down or, or anything like that. It's, it's the idea of coming to their side and walking alongside with them. right? So, so we take this coming day of the Lord and we, we encourage one another with it. 
I, I never saw this kind of day of the Lord used to encourage other believers. I, I always you, heard it used to scare people into heaven, right? Uh, you, you better be ready because he's coming. And, you know, we'd hear the altar calls and, you know, we, we, we'd, we'd come forward. And that's how I always heard this. But Paul uses this as a way of encouraging, a way where we use this to encourage one another. I, I imagine using this when, when there's a uh, fearfulness in the midst of pandemic to, to bring a passage like this alongside and to, to read together with another Christian and to encourage one another about, about how much this pandemic makes us long even more for the return of Christ. But quite frankly, mo- most of us don't long for the return of Christ because we don't want to miss out on what the world has. And, and I feel like the, this pandemic has, it, it's taken a lot of those things away the things that we love, the things that we enjoy and delight in. Um, We've gone through a season where we've we've missed those. And I pray, Christian, that it's a time that makes you long even more for the return of Christ, where you long where he comes and and he makes this right, where he brings, he he makes a new creation, where he is, he restores fully uh, this world. He eases the uh, the groans and the pains of this world crying out of the way sin has affected it. And that you come alongside a fearful brother or sister and, and you encourage them. You say, isn't, isn't that going to be great when the day of the Lord returns? You know, this is a hard season and it's okay for us to mourn and grieve what's been lost during this season. But may it make us long for his return even more. It's another command here. To build one another up. This is the image of, uh, of building a home, right? Where we, we take a foundation and we, we, we lay the foundation and we take bricks and whatever you're building out of and you piece them together brick by brick and you, you put all the finishes on a house and you, you begin to build it up. You start at the bottom and you just begin to build it up. Uh, this is something that we not only come along side by side, but it's also something we use to help each other grow in our faith something that establishes our faith, gives it a foundation, and then helps it to grow. All right? And I think this is the other part of it is uh, that during this time and, and as we come out of this time that we need, we need to grow, right? We, we need to be ready to build up one another. We need to be ready to um, uh, find other believers and read the Bible one-on-one with them. We need to be ready as, as you're able and as you're comfortable to, to begin to, to come back with God's people and, and to be built up through our time with the Word, through our time around one another. Uh, we, we need to be ready to build one another up, right? 10, 12 weeks of not gathering together is a long time for us to be without Christian community. And, and there's a lot of building up that needs to happen. Right? I'm sure there's, there's a lot individually and, and in families where this has, been, this has been a storm that's hit a house and it's, it's taken some shingles off and it's, it's messed up some siding and maybe it's broken some windows. And, and, and we need to be ready, church, to, to get back to, to helping one another build one another back up in the faith. And where there has been hurt and where there's been breakdown and where there's been loss, to, to come alongside, to encourage but also to strengthen and build back up in the faith. Um, I think one of the great things that we're going to be able to do coming out of this is is we're probably not going back to a lot of programs, and we've we've not been a big program church anyway, but I think one of the greatest areas of ministry is going to be able to meet one-on-one with other believers and just open up our Bibles and build one another up through the reading of the Word. Right? Our capacities are going to be more limited. We're not going to have quite the flexibility for gatherings, but... But we're going to be able to go to coffee shops pretty soon. We're going to be able to go to restaurants pretty soon. We can go meet at a park. We can, we can find areas to, to get with another believer on a lunch break and after work one day or have another family over to the home and, and to, to spend time together, to read the Bible together, to pray with one another, to spend the time working to build one another back up in the faith. And, and I'll just tell you, I, I am so ready for that. I, I am so ready for the time to be back together. I, I, I'm ready for reading the Bible one-to-one again. I feel like this time away has renewed the passion to be back to some of those foundational things that we talk about as a church. And so um, I'm looking forward to that, and I hope you are too, because this is a time where we need to take passages like this 
doctrines like the coming of the day of the Lord and encourage one another, build one another up, uh, help Christians take one step each day as we walk in the Lord and grow in the Lord. So that day is coming, right? Hopefully you're going to watch this video and, and about a week later, we're going to be opening back up. And I, I know that not everyone's going to feel comfortable uh, and we're going to continue to find ways to help care for you uh, and build you up uh, as you uh, remain safe in your homes and things like that. Uh, but but I, I'm longing after reading this letter that has talked about Paul's longing to gather back together. Uh, I pray that that longing has, is growing in you um, and encourage you to, to look forward to that day where we come back together. Um, our capacity for that is going to be as big as we need it to be because of the, the location we're at. So, man, please feel free to invite other Christians, invite non-Christians who might be interested um, and come. And we're going to gather back together and hopefully next week um, we will finish up this letter of 1 Thessalonians in person. And this will be a great kind of summation passage for the entire letter that we have studied during our time away. So hopefully I look forward to, to seeing you in person next week. And again, be on the lookout for emails that are going to give more information about that regathering. So Reuben's going to come up and he's going to send us out, commission us to go out and bring joy to our city. And I'm going to pray for us and then he's going to come and, uh, and send us out to go bring joy. Father, thank you for this passage. Thank you for the coming day of the Lord. Father, uh, you know, we... In, as humans, we, we want to know the day and the time that you're coming, but you've not promised that to us. You've told us it's going to be unexpected and it's going to be inescapable. So what we can do is we can be ready. We can be alert and sober and watchful, and we can encourage and build up one another. So help us, Father, to do that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Christian, we had an opportunity to meet up with some of you today and catch up and Boy, it was just an encouraging and incredible time. Um, we are looking forward to coming back together with you. And uh, we're just so thankful for you. And we're continuing to pray for you. Um, let's finish today's service with uh, this word from Ephesians 5. It's going to be 5, 14 through 21. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Look carefully, then, how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. So we are, we're looking forward to coming back together with you, and we hope you are too. Let's finish this by praying. Father, we thank you for your word and how it just continues to grow in us, how you've just placed that, that seed in our hearts, Lord. And uh, Lord, let us come together uh, alongside each other as we get through this time and um, as, we, as we see that, that reunion coming uh, just a week away, Lord. We thank you so much. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Center City Church, you are sent. Bring joy to the people around you and uh, preach the gospel. Show people your faith.